your source for all things Texas Tech. This is the Ask Level Podcast from Double T 97.3. Hey, what's going on? Welcome into another episode of the Ask Level Podcast, number 77 for those of you keeping uh, track out there. Alongside Chris Level, I am Choice Woodman. Thanks to our friends at Cantex Roofing and Construction for sponsoring this podcast. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Level, uh, looks like you're all there. You survived the uh, eclipse or apocalypse or, you know, you know everybody going <laughs> crazy this week. So that's, were that's you uh, Were you really into that? really into it no i had a pair of glasses left over from the last one so <laughs> which was just uh i know these are different but we had just one in like october yeah yes yes because i remember yeah. getting those it was the day of one of the tech football games it was it was a saturday yeah, yeah. it was around uh because it happened around that. 12 or 1 or whatever i remember uh and i was like man i gotta i gotta hurry up and eat lunch because i was eating lunch with my wife and daughter and i was like we gotta i gotta hurry up and get back so i can get to the stadium and all that stuff so yeah i think or, if or, it was, there, or was it maybe a basketball game a basketball i think it was football game. okay football okay all right. all right well i remember yeah i remember being outside the stadiums when i was watching so okay okay must have been yeah. so if it would have been a full, I mean, like the total eclipse, if we were in one of those zones, I probably would have been a of little the more heart. into it. Shout yeah. out to Bonnie Tyler. Of course. Boom. I know course. everybody's got the same joke, same yeah. song. Yeah. All that. Have you heard it today? Because I've definitely heard that at least twice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've heard it uh, so. several times. I've heard, uh, let's see, Dancing in the Dark. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've heard, yeah. I'm trying to remember the other songs that everybody was like, thought would be cute. I think the, like eclipse, eclipse humor uh, is like, uh, I don't know, but whatever. I, I uh, we, think, we wasted a lot of time on this. Yeah, the, the people who won the eclipse the best was the uh, Texas Rangers social media. If you haven't seen it, it was pretty good. So uh, go hunt that down. If you're a Rangers fan. If El Bombi. Rangers, yeah, El Bombi. <laughs> yeah, you're, but you see, you're biased there. I'm yeah, very you're, biased. <laughs> yeah, you're, and, you're biased. I'm sorry, world champion Texas Rangers. Got to gotta throw that in front. So uh, level, uh, we're, in, we're in the period after basketball, spring football. Um, we'll get into a little bit of both here. Uh, but let's start with that big news. It was, I mean last week at this point and when you're listening to this, but, but coach McGuire says, makes a statement that Baron Morton was going to be shut down for the rest of spring football. And regardless of whether it's a big deal or not, it's a big deal because of who it is. And, and it gets a lot of, uh, of attention. Coach McGuire did say, I believe that uh, if there was a game that particular day, he was talking to the media that Baron Morton would have played, but they're, they're taking it, uh, seemingly cautious with uh with a young arm yeah it, it uh it's not like you 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 just curl up in the fetal position and panic or anything um and, and worry and all that but i think you would be naive to think that this is in any way good news um yeah. i think there's there's reason to to worry uh there's reason to because I guess, because here's the, the the fair questions to ask aloud are, well, isn't he coming off of about two to three months of just rest? Largely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that, what like rest in his world looks like. I mean, is he still lifting? Is he still throwing at all? Is he yeah. totally shut down? I mean, what, what does that entail? And then if we start doing the math, it's like, okay, um, basically the first of, of, of April, um, well, so April, May, June, that's mm -hmm. three. Um, so what, are we good to go in July? Um, you, you know, I um, mean, does he, is he going to have to go see somebody, you know? So anyway, it's just not, uh, it's not ideal news because if everything was fine, He'd be he just continue to practice. 
like every other uh, starting quarterback in the country would do. You would, there would be no precautionary. Hey, we're just going to shut him down, try to get these other guys some reps. That's not what you do, right? Uh, because the thing is, Barron hasn't had just a ton of reps since he's been on campus here. You know, he had a high ankle two years ago. Uh, he missed a lot of time in between games and just in general. Uh, you know, whenever he played two years ago, uh, then obviously this past year, he wasn't practicing at all. Uh, I think Tyler Shuck in the previous two springs has gotten uh, over half the reps, you know, as far as first team and all that stuff. It's not like Barron doesn't have any reps uh, in the system at all. It's just, he he's a, he's a guy with multiple years to play here that just is not somebody that's just got all kinds of uh, of experience and practice and all those things so uh and then here's the caveat with that the the the, the real problem is is that he he's got a whole new group up front and he's got a lot of new bells and whistles that he's gonna right. be throwing to right. and all that that you need to to work on timing and chemistry with that you won't be afforded so um yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a bit interesting there. It's a bit uh, tricky. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, you don't want it. You would love in a rosy world for everybody to go through spring ball, stay healthy, get that synergy that you're talking about of working with each other, especially with all these these new pieces. But you, with a quarterback that's had the injury issues in the past, and you know, we it felt like last year we went through a stretch of just. We didn't know which Baron Morton, if we got which Baron Morton we were getting every Saturday when he was on the field, is it the one that's feeling good or the one that's, that's, you know, labored a little bit, but, um, I, I guess my naivete from last year is just, uh, that I thought, okay, if you get through this, you get to spring, you're going to have time for him to rest. It just kind of all goes away. You're, you're, you get him at a hundred percent by spring ball. And I, I think that's where my concern, like a lot of other tech fans is, is like, are you going to go through this? If he is healthy enough to play in the fall, are you going to go through the same thing you went through last year where it's just, okay, is Baron feeling good this week or not? My concern is that you use the word naivete. I mean, <laughs> I knew that was coming. I could tell. Off I love it. I, I, I absolutely am not concerned at all. Like tip of the cap, tip of the cap to you there, uh, Coach Woodman. I love it. Um, you, you know, w- with what we know now, this is not how it works. Yeah. With what we know now, I wonder if, and this again, this would have been a tough decision to make as well. But with what they know now, I wonder if they would have said, you know what. No spring for Baron Morton. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have just said, Let, let's just, let's kind of take a bit of a hit here. Let's give him the full, you know, allotment of rest to ensure there are no issues, yeah. you know, and we're going to take the bullet on, on, okay. Yes, he could, he could certainly use these reps mm-hmm. and, and timing and chemistry with these guys, you know, but uh, but because I, I I think now you look back on it and go man I you know I mean who, who knows but um, yeah. I wonder if that's what uh, if if that's what they would uh, do oh, do if they could do it over again but who knows it doesn't life doesn't work that way there's a lot of things that probably <laughs> uh, I like to say hey no regrets man no regrets in life I don't have any right every sure every everything has molded me to who I am and shaped me to who I am and and all the all the stuff but. I'm sure there's some things I'd probably like to do over again. Um, but, you know, th- uh, you know, if, uh, everybody got to be mulligan golfers where you get a second shot every time we'd all be better golfers than we are. So it, it's kind of in that, that category. Yeah. My, uh, my, my kid is in the, in the, he's doing golf now, high school golf and stuff. And how's that going? We just picked it up a year ago, but he, he played with a family member recently who doesn't really play golf and fancies themselves as a, is decent. And so, and my kid is really trying to follow the rules and being structured and like, you know, that's the, that's the way he's been coached and, and all that stuff. So, you know, the penalties and, you know, drops and all those things. And like, you know, and so they, they played on, I guess it was on Easter Sunday that afternoon. And it was yeah. like, yeah, 
insert name here he hit like three or four in the water and then finally hit, hit one in the fairway and then we get to the the green and he kind of put it out and he's like yeah just give me a bogey <laughs> like <laughs> he's like no that you, you i mean you'd probably be at like 15 you know like if, if you were, if you were truth be, you're not gonna uh, out said family member <laughs> no i'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna, i right. just thought it was funny because it's That's like fair. you know yeah it's like you, you mentioned the word mulligan 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 and it's oh, like yeah. uh yeah but hey just give me a bogey man. just give me a I bogey mean, I, I finally got one to work and then i played that deal but don't count those other of course you know, of course, you, know, you, yeah. you step up and address the ball and like swing and miss or duff it or whatever. No, that, oh yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're on the clock, buddy. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, uh, I I wish that wasn't a bit of a, a storyline with with yeah. Aaron, um, because I I would ask you this question, and I think it's a fair question to ask aloud. Uh, I know what I would have said before spring started, but now I may change my answer or tweak it a bit the the storyline with this team really to me was gonna be offensive line was like one and one a yeah how, how, what does it look like um how good are you has it progressed now you have a new position coach there and clay mcguire that's just the big concern the big question mark it has been for the last three to seven years and until it gets fixed, you know, there's a reason you're bringing in, you know, uh, four transfers at that one position and all that stuff. But is Barron's shoulder now more of a question mark on this team than the offensive line is? I don't know. But I think it's uh, as you go into the offseason, those are fair questions to ask about what worries you more if you're into worrying or whatever, mm -hmm. or if you're, I don't know, you know, um, so it, I, I just, I think until you just know a thousand percent, hey man, no issues. He's good to go. I, I think you have reason to be uh, a bit concerned there. Speaking of questions, this was a question that was asked on the, the radio earlier this week. And I'm like, that'd be a good one for level. So I'm, I'm stealing it from there. But uh, the question level is if you could know the answer to one question, not results based for Texas Tech football. So whether that's, you know, Morton health, whatever, whatever it is, if you could know the answer to the, to one question for tech football in the fall this year, what would you want to know the answer to? Okay. So you're just basically getting you know, and and you're saying the answer could be somewhat uh, bad. Could be I mean, bad. Yeah. I mean, it it just, be, oh, but, but you, you at least know, is that what you you're just want to know? Like I'm skipped to the, yeah, well, I'm going to go back to the offensive line and here's why. Okay. I would love if, if you could skip to the end and ultimately know this is going to be the best version of what they are. Here, here's where, here's who goes where and all those things. Let me know what that is. And then if I knew that I would, I would alter my whole rest of practice time in the summer, trying to be, be really good at the play calling and the plays that I think would benefit me knowing that because I think last year it was a bit of a an interesting start to the season because I think that you were kind of morphing and changing who you were uh in the first three to five weeks of the season before you kind of were like you know what let's just yeah. keep handing it to Brooks man you know um yeah. and and your receivers were struggling and all that but if I knew what kind of offensive line that I I was going to ultimately have like Here's the best version of what they're going to be, and and this is what I'm going to work with. I would love to know that because then I think I could really cater my offense around it, toward it, and all those things. Whereas I don't know if any other position on the team would would necessarily like help you with a whole bunch of extra practice time and schematic advantages. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I, I think so. I, I would answer it in that way. So, how do you think the offensive line? uh has meshed or is meshing so far this spring because you got a lot of new faces there obviously and and uh you know you you talked about it before but you, you got a new uh offensive line coach you've got your returner there uh with Caleb Rogers that was supposed to move to center is that going to happen or not what what's the story from the offensive line so far this spring 
Yeah, I, uh, I, I think that's where the, this is a fascinating position, one, just because it was going to be a huge question anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two, it's like, yeah, you, you, you changed up the leadership there, what, two months ago? Mm-hmm. And so all, all the preconceived ideas and notions about, yeah, let's move him here. Let's look at this guy here. Let's recruit this kind of guy. Let's do whatever. I mean, all that gets changed when a new position coach comes in. Right. And they they may have a completely different fresh set on, well, why don't we block it up this way? And and if and if we do that, why don't he he's probably better here and, yeah. and he, him here. I mean, it, it's like the possibilities are endless, which that's the problem is you only have so much time. Um, and so I, I think Clay McGuire is is going to be, um, you know, a benefit to Zach Kitley because he's worked with like you know your Lincoln Rileys, uh, your Mike Leeches, your Cliff Kingsburys, your Jake Spavitals. Um, uh, oh, who's the guy at Washington State now? Um, I actually think he spent some time for West Texas A and M. Uh, ben Arbuckle. Uh huh. Um, who's going to be a hot uh, name, I think, at some point. So he, so Clay has worked for a variety of different minds, and yep. I think, and he's coached a variety of different positions. So I think that that ability to see the total picture really kind of could help uh, Zach Kitley, and yep. I think to- it kind of helps you put together your offensive line because I've coached tight ends. I know what I'm going to ask those guys to do, and this is why this guy would be better at right tackle or left tackle with a tight end next to him or whatever. Um, sure. And I've coached running backs, so I know you know all, all that stuff. But I, I just think uh, um, I think that offensive line is going to be really fascinating. But I do think they're they're kind of paring it down. Like it, you know, you kind of have a group of eight to ten names that you kind of hear more about. And there's the 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 quote unquote younger group, which is going to be. Nick Fadig and Jacob Ponton and uh, Caden Carr and on mm-hmm. and on it goes, but I think you're you're looking at some of your incumbents and some of your your transfers and all those things, and and then you had a guy like uh, Caleb Rodkey and Dalton Merriman. Um, Dalton Merriman, I think that they were both dinged up a bit uh, late in the season and kind of just now cleared and or, or semi still dinged up, and so you you you've got some pieces like that you're trying to work back into the mix as well, but. Oh, fascinating position. I don't know to answer your question too, and I'll wrap up uh, on the, my answer on this, but I'm not sure what happens with Caleb Rogers, actually. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think that they had intentions of putting him at center. Yeah. I think the NFL views him as somebody that's an interior offensive lineman. Okay. Guard or center. And I, I don't know if they're sold on him at center just yet. Uh, but again, it's, it's, early to mid April here. Right. You know, you've got, you know, you've got a long way to go. Um, So we'll just kind of see what, what this ultimately looks like, but I don't know if he is in line to start at center or play center even, or, but, and if he's not, which guard spot is it? And you know, we totally sure he's not going to get kicked out to tackle. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, cause somebody's going to get kind of squeezed here with who they brought in and kind of fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one question, this one from Jason says, uh, level, what are, or who are the biggest standouts so far in the spring? It's kind of a broad Well, question. yeah, that's, that's tricky. Uh, it, it's funny. Cause if you look at, if you listen to every one of these assistant coaches that's interviewed, they, uh, they don't really, they hate those questions. Yeah, they uh, do. It's like, like, who are you talking about? You know, like, like who, who are the, what's your definition of the young guys or um you know they they don't like singling anybody out because sure. they're trying to develop their whole position room and the group and all that but you, look you hear good things about um Josh Kelly certainly uh, I think you hear some good things about uh John Carlos um uh Miller Miller yeah. Uh, yeah you hear you hear good things about uh Davion Carter Mm-hmm. Uh, Vinny Scurry, uh, you hear good things about, um, Mo Horn. Uh, I think you hear good things about your, your young bucks, the, you know, Jordan Sanford's Brendan Jordan and all that you hear, yeah. um, you know, I think, uh, Jack Burgess, your, your new punter, I think is, is been, is acclimated fairly, uh, quickly, but 
th this is tricky to narrow it down because it it may depend on what day you're asking about. It may depend on, you know, um, you know, specific positions and, and all those things. Not to cop out on the answer, but uh, yeah, that's all I'll offer up, I guess I should say. <laughs> I think yeah. that's fair. Anything yeah. else to add on spring football before we move to basketball questions? I don't know if no, any. I don't. Okay. I don't guess so. Yeah. Uh, so the mm. first basketball. First off, we're in a period of craziness with uh, coaching carousel and transfer portal all going on at the same time. Um, any, what's been the most shocking thing of the coaching carousel to you so far? <laughs> well, I mean, Calipari to Arkansas. Yeah, um, I figured would would certainly be. You know, that's that's basically uh, to me. Jimbo Fisher going A and M is the is the yep. best equivalent uh, I can I can give you there. Um, yeah, I mean, and it's you you know what's funny is is that uh, <laughs> who knows where this domino you know like domino effect stops. Yeah, but you know what that was all started by. SMU looking at Rob Lanier oh, yeah. 20, 20 game season at 20 win season, excuse me, and saying not good enough. We're we're gonna we're gonna move on, man. It's crazy. Coach, Coach Lanier, appreciate it. And then it started this carousel, and I don't know where it ultimately stops. Um yeah, because SMU gets infield from USC and then Musselman goes from Arkansas to USC. Yeah, it it is crazy that one domino, I mean, can the newest the, the newest uh acc school <laughs> yeah yeah it's nuts and and one that's not even getting any money to to, no. to be in the league and they they kind of caused a chaos yeah it's it's crazy that that's how it happened but um and, and we don't know where it can stops like you said but the time we're recording this kentucky doesn't have a coach but that could be a big 12 guy that that ends up at kentucky we don't know i mean the scott drew's name's been mentioned a lot um and then what happens with the Baylor job if that ended up happening so it just continues to uh it's it, it's crazy to see what happens with the the carousel all the while these guys that are having their names mentioned with jobs are sitting there trying to get guys in the transfer portal as well to say hey hey come to my school we want we want you at my school um and the portal timing of all this it, does that ever get changed because uh, it's nuts that you, you've got the portal open for two or three weeks during March Madness, and these coaches continue to to try to coach through that. Yeah, you know, I I think they could maybe alter that a week or three uh, somewhere, and this is kind of the weird sweet spot. But bottom line, you you can never. As much as they would try to narrow down these windows and fix the calendar and all that, you can't ever foresee some of these things happening mm -hmm. and and like totally hit 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 the you know be perfect with it and like right. you know um, it just doesn't because schools can't be worried about a calendar. Schools can't be worried about like it, it's like I saw people suggesting. You know, if if they if they were to announce Calipari on a, the day of the national championship, you know, d d as an example, that is wildly disrespectful. That's not Arkansas's job. Yeah, it's like people should worry about their own job. Do your job. You know, uh, hey, th that media member, he 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 broke a story uh, about about something, and so <laughs> I'm gonna go complain to the what why do they get to break it hey it's not my job to like make sure every media member is pleased and yeah and all those things i mean it's not my job to worry about you know when a story comes out that's not i you know we can't control that so you can't really if you're trying to control we'd like to put everything in this night neat box uh with with portal entries and and, and all these things it's just and, and coaching hirings and firings and all that it's it's just a bit tricky so could they help everybody involved a little bit, uh, uh, you know, by an, a week or two? Sure. But, you know, even then there's going to be things that happen outside the the window there. Yeah. Yeah. There's no question. So uh, one of our other questions, this one comes from Mark says level, do we have, when will we start seeing the roster additions 
uh, from the portal for Texas Tech? And is there any big names that they're in on right now? Well, you, the, the, your problem right now is that you're in a bit of a dead period. Um, you know, they, they do, uh, yeah, there, there's no, I don't think they're, you're allowed to have any visits and all these things until, you know, you, you and I are talking early in the week and this is, this dead period goes on until late in the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, once that is up, cause it's been really, I think it's the Thursday before the final four. Um, and then it ends the Friday after the title game. So it's okay. a it's an eight day window, and I don't know exact times on uh, times of the day. Like, is it you know opens sure. up at you know whatever? But lar- large in part, you get the idea that this is kind of a quiet period. But once that opens up, I think that yeah, you can start to see quite a bit of movement. Um, I, I don't I don't have any specifics on on players that they're interested in, but I think that you could start to see some of the criteria that Grant is you know length and size yes i think he likes the you, you know i i think i don't know if, if, if i want to say the right word is prefers the group of five type guy you know yeah. like the nevada the grand canyon type yeah uh you you saw a kid from wyoming come in here and, and visit and i think that there's some interest there certainly originally from san antonio yep um you know uh so i i you know I think you can kind of, but they need, they need a couple of bigs and a couple of guards at the at the minimum right now yeah. uh, that, that are not just let's fill out a roster with these dudes. Like that can play play. Yeah. Uh, well, this question from Carlos asks, or it says, I saw that where, or I read where pop Isaacs uh, was maybe asked to leave. Is there any truth to that? I don't. I don't believe that to be true at all. No, uh, I, I think that there was a difference of opinion on how he would be utilized from a basketball standpoint. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. I think that, um, and it's not hard to connect some dots when you when you look at what Pop's dad, who I've talked to a lot, he's calls me Todd just talking hoops during the season and uh, just to shoot the bull and you know, check on him with his cancer stuff. But, you know, he would say things on social media about, um, you know, point guard and this and that. And, you know, he he would just be dropping these little Easter egg crumbs that uh, I I say that that's probably uh, an Easter egg is not a crumb. It just needs to be (laughs) one or the other. I didn't need to use both terms, just Easter eggs. The Reese's egg makes crumbs. Or or crumbs, not Easter egg crumbs. I think that's uh, an Easter egg wouldn't make crumbs. Sorry. But he he would he would drop some uh, thoughts there about and I you could just kind of tell that you know and I'm not my opinion my opinion okay I don't yep. think Pop is a point guard I think he's a he's a combo guard I think he's somebody that is good off the ball and he's good on the ball I don't mm-hmm. know if he would be you know exceptional if he was strictly one or the other. Um, I think that's the beauty of his game is that he can do a little of both and it's kind of, uh, it, it's, it's, it's mixed in and blended together a little bit. Uh, so that, that's what I would say. Do I, do I think he was run off? Absolutely not. I don't think he was. Mm-hmm. No. And this had nothing to do with me. My opinion it had nothing to do with NIL. Uh, it had nothing to do with the, the legal stuff that, you know, everybody is kind of connected, try to connect dots on. I think this was just a very much of a, basketball decision and i think it was amicable uh, on both sides of it i think each side wished the other well and i i'll be careful about saying this because i was right when i said this about Devin because he ended up circling back i guess i would say i wouldn't uh i wouldn't just talk in a hundred percent absolutes that he would not be back i don't think he's going to be back i think he'll end up playing elsewhere yeah, but it, it, would I just be floored and stunned and shocked if it's like a month from now? It's like, man, I really want to figure this out. You know, I, yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to be back. Yeah, I wouldn't be stunned or floored. I guess no. What about Robert Jennings? Do you think he is, or any of the other guys that have put their names in the portal? I think that those guys. Uh, I think everybody other than Pop is seeking more playing time that I'm not sure can be offered up here. 
Okay. And so I think that that's a decision that they have to ultimately decide on what they want out of their basketball career. Yeah. Do, do I, am I willing to stay here and try to work hard and try to prove them wrong and try to squeeze a little more, you know, some more minutes out of this deal Mm -hmm. or do I want to go seek more, uh, a starting role, uh, a primary rotation role somewhere else? You know, that's what, uh, that that's to me like, and that, that fits the bill for, Jennings and Lamar, uh, Demarion, Lindsey, uh, certainly Steffi. I'm trying to think of who else uh, would be missing there, but you get the idea. Yeah, I think the, yeah, more more playing time would be the the what 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 fueled that, in my opinion. That makes sense. So level, I think we uh, covered about all of it for this week. We'll we'll. Uh... Yes, next week we'll have another spring football. We're we're closing down on spring football. About two weeks left, and then uh, maybe know some more portal news by that time. It just kind of kind of leaks through here in the in the spring. Yeah, and you've got uh, so you're just coming off of uh, Tim Tadlock sweeping another series. Uh, yep. They're eight and se- boys are eight and seven, and yeah, I think I have more overall wins than anybody in the Big Twelve. It's uh, true. I think they're still like I don't know what is it like fifth or sixth or seventh or somewhere in the Big Twelve standings. Um, yeah, WrestleMania, but... WrestleMania is uh, behind us. Um, <laughs> Did the, you the, get the, the results you wanted? The, the basketball uh, <laughs> situations are behind us. Yeah. The Masters is upcoming and then you oh, got man. uh yeah, Masters week is here. Uh nice. and you've got um uh the NFL draft coming up in a couple weeks as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot lot going on. Our guy Aberg uh or Obear, whichever you like to call him, uh, <laughs> uh he he gets his first Masters start, so that that should be fun to watch that from a tech. Absolutely. Right yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and if you're going, if you're somebody in the audience and oh, you man. just are end up getting to go Make sure you go get you an egg salad sandwich. Take you about five bucks in the concession stand. You'll be able to eat like a king. Uh, it's uh, Love it. it is it is glorious. Uh, TV does that place no justice. And TV I does say. it. I mean, TV makes it look amazing. Too, I agree, so I, but if so you, I, uh... you can't you can't appreciate the greens and just the other stuff without seeing it with these uh, you know eclipsed uh, sore eyes here. <laughs> yeah yeah number one yeah. bucket list item for me right there gonna oh yeah it's someday it's, uh, it's awesome yeah. yeah so level appreciate the time as usual we'll uh we'll do it again next week keep hope alive thank you to cantex roofing for uh being a part of this one uh wouldn't appreciate you uh helping facilitate uh all these uh, enjoy them and uh talk to you next time people keep the questions coming love it it's uh it's fun that's chris level i'm choice woodman it's been the ask level podcast brought to you by double t 97.3 You've been listening to the Ask Level Podcast, powered by Double T 97.3.